I want to turn your attention this morning for just a few brief moments uh, as we look forward to installing Nick O'Neill as a deacon in this church. I'd like for you to turn in your Bibles to Acts chapter 6. At the very beginning of the church, the church is birthed in Acts 2, and there were some pressing physical needs. Uh, Gentile widows who were not being uh, cared for and having their physical needs met um, in relationship to the Jewish uh, women there. And so you have a ethnic tension and physical needs and the, the pressing need for the apostles to preach and teach and to pray. And it required another layer of leadership, godly men filled with the Spirit who could meet physical needs. And so they served tables uh, there in the beginning days of the church. We read in Acts 6, beginning in verse 1, In those days the disciples were multiplying in number. There was grumbling from the Hellenists, that's the Greeks, against the Hebrews, because their widows were being overlooked in the daily serving of food. So the twelve summoned the congregation of disciples and said, It is not pleasing to God for us to neglect the word of God in order to serve tables. Therefore, brothers, select from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the spirit and of wisdom, whom we may put in charge of this need. We will devote ourselves to prayer and to the service of the word. And this word pleased the whole congregation, and they chose. And then you get the list of seven names of men we might call proto-deacons. Uh, the, the church has not been constituted with all of its offices yet at this point. That will unfold in the pages of the New Testament. Um, but here we have this early layer of servant leadership that freed up the apostles for the word of God and prayer. And these men had to be full of the spirit. They had to be of sound doctrine. Uh, they had to be of godly character. And they had to navigate difficult circumstances with patience and wisdom. When you fast forward in the New Testament to where the, the offices of the church are constituted, uh, we see this in 1 Timothy 3, for instance, where uh, the two offices in the church are laid out, elders and deacons, both with their respective character requirements, task requirements. We see this layer of leadership matured in the church here in the role of deacons. We read in 1 Timothy 3.8, deacons must be dignified, not double-tongued, not indulging in much wine, not fond of sordid gain, holding to the mystery of the faith with a clear conscience. These men must first be tested, then let them serve as deacons if they are beyond reproach. Deacons must be husbands of only one wife, leading their children and their households well. And those who have served well as deacons obtain for themselves a high standing and great boldness in the faith that is in Christ Jesus." So we have in the New Testament a depiction of this servant layer of leadership with requirements for godliness and the expectation of the meeting of tasks. And just as those proto-deacons served in tangible ways that freed up the apostles to the word of God and to prayer, so likewise in the church, the office of deacon frees up the elders, the other office in the church, elders, pastors, to labor in the word of God and prayer. And these deacons are able to meet physical needs. Grace Bible Church, uh, we have focused our deacon ministry to be task specific. That is where there is a task, godly men are raised up to meet those specific needs. As our church has matured in some ways and experienced hardships, there is a growing need in our church to meet the needs of widows and people who are in similar situations as widows. And so what has emerged is a ministry called the Barnabas ministry. Barnabas is a character from Acts 4. His name means son of encouragement. And in the opening scenes of the church, he had property that he sold in order to meet the physical needs of people in the church. And then throughout his career in the New Testament, he is a relentless encourager and servant. So the Barnabas ministry, it's not named after Barnabas Lee, so there's no confusion. Um, but the Barnabas ministry seeks to embody those characteristics, godliness, the meeting of physical needs, regular encouragement, and particularly aimed at those uh, who have a, a particular season of life and need, widows and women in a similar situation. And, and women in that season of life have particular needs, physical needs, 
uh, related to keeping up a home and car repair and, and lawn and other benevolence type of needs. And so the Barnabas, Barnabas ministry exists to seek out those in our church in that demographic to keep tabs on them. What do they need? What needs need to be met? Where are the gaps in their care? And so the, the Barnabas ministry led by Nick O'Neill, but then staffed by a, an army of capable men and women are able to meet physical needs. So there's a variety of gifts and resources in this grouping of men, um, drywall and plumbing and electrical and auto repair, and sometimes just sheer muscle. Um, to meet some of these needs. So I want to be clear that, that this is not free handyman service in the church. Okay, if you're not on the list, you're not on the list. Is that clear? <laughs> if you become aware of a need of somebody who fits the list, and by the way, uh, having a list for these types of needs is biblical. You can read First Timothy 5. If you're aware of a need, you can let the office know or let Nick O'Neill know. Um, if you are in this demographic and you have a need, we don't always know what your needs are. Please let us know. And one of the things the Barnabas ministry does is uh, intends to reach out on a regular basis to check up on those needs. So I hope I've explained the ministry well enough. If you have more questions about it, uh, ask Nick, ask any of the elders. Um, but what we'd like to do is ask Nick to come up here now and you can bring Vivian with you for moral support. Nick has been uh, examined in his doctrine, in his character, in his life. And we presented him before you about a month ago um, for the opportunity for you to give input into his life. And Nick, mostly what people said was pretty good. <laughs> we just received all positive input for Nick. I'd like to ask the elders to come up and we're gonna commission Nick to uh, this ministry. And um, uh, just so you can get a visual here, uh, I'd love for you to stand if you are already part of the Barnabas ministry. If you're on the list, you should know who you are. Yes, Emmett, you should be standing up right now. Okay. Okay. Don't be shy. Okay, there are more. Nick, call them out. Okay. If you want to be a part of this ministry with... Yeah, there are some ladies involved too. Okay, yep. Okay. Uh, with every head bowed and every eye closed, and you want to volunteer, I'm just kidding. Um, we're going to pray, and uh, the guys are going to kind of put their hands on Nick as a, a symbol of our commissioning him to this deacon ministry, and you can rejoice with us and thank God for this as we go forward. You guys can sit down. Thank you. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the way you have ordered your church and so wisely put in place this office of a deacon layer of leadership. And we thank you for Nick and for his life. We thank you for Vivian and her care and support and love for him. Uh, we thank you for the ways he has already been tested, uh, the ways he has already been serving in this critical ministry. And we do pray for the widows in this church and for women who are in a similar situation. And, and we ask that you would care for their needs and that the men and women of this church would be your hands uh, to meet their needs. And we thank you for this uh, servant leader in Nick that you've raised up to administrate this ministry. We ask that you would go before him, uh, that you would uh, use him and use all involved for your glory, for the building up of your church. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.